Does that work? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, <coughs> good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Regina Henschel. Uh, welcome to my talk about uh, multicolor gradients in macros. Um, I assume that you have already written a macro. Um, who has already used gradients in macros? <laughs> uh, the talk focuses on uh, things which are new, uh, but the uh, library attached to the presentation file uh, contains uh, parts too which are not specific to multicolor gradients, um, and uh, that uh, part will help you in case you have not used gradients yet. Um, in addition, I have uploaded a library which um, contains a lot of uh, snippets about uh, gradients uh, which you will help you to, to when you go to write your own um, e extension about um, <coughs> with multicolor gradients. Uh, the okay, cool. let us. Uh, Multicolor gradients are new in uh, 7.6. Uh, when you uh, implement a new feature, there are a um, lot of areas affected. Uh, there is a core part with filter and rendering and uh, core modeling that is part of, Ar of Armin. You can uh, listen to his talk tomorrow. Uh, I um, We'll talk tomorrow about the file format, and now uh, we are in the API, how to use them in macros. Uh, unfortunately, we have not yet a user interface for um, multicolor gradients. So when you will use some beyond the um, predefined ones, you really need uh, either use macros or uh, edit the file format. Uh, the presentation and, uh, um, shows you uh, one example how to do, uh, to do that. Uh, that is a lot of, lot of code. The, sh the slides show only um, a part of the code. Uh, for those uh, who um, want to have a larger um, a view on it. I have printed uh, uh, the, uh, them. I'm moving over here. Let's do sample. Can. Can. Is that okay. Uh, besides that, uh, the code has uh, emphasized parts and you should uh, focus on them and do not try to read uh, com complete uh, uh, snippets. Uh, this is a slide I, uh, <coughs> I have used to uh, take screenshots, which you will see in the next slides. Uh, hmm, it's... Uh, it is a, a slide which has a background with um, a gradient. The light here is not uh, so good for that gradient, but... Okay. Uh, when you <coughs> work with um, macros, there are the development tools, and uh, they are a great helper when you're uh, <coughs> writing macros. Um, so first step, we look how uh, gra <coughs> gradients are in this, uh, can be seen in the development tools. Uh, <coughs> when you start the development tools, uh, you have on the left side the objects, and, and for this part we, we need the master slides and our example, which I showed you uh, just. Then on the right uh, side you have a tab with properties and in this properties you will find the background of this slide. When you expand it, you get a long, long, long list of properties of the background and you um, should scroll down uh, to the fill properties. 
the fill properties are here. And here you see the fill style. That's, uh, that tells you that um, actually a, a gradient shall be used. Then you uh, have a fill gradient name, in this uh, case a submarine, uh, that uh, tells you what gradient to be used. When this um, gradient name property is empty, uh, there is no gradient actually used. Uh, the gradients are, <coughs> are listed in a gradient table in the document. And this table has a name access. So uh, this name submarine is a, a link into this table. That is not new. That is a, uh, the same with the existing uh, uh, gradients we already have. And here we have the um, gradient uh, definition itself. And when we open that, we have the first difference. We have no longer a gradient, but now we have a gradient 2. Uh, gradient 2 is an extension to the uh, gradient. We have a lot of um, um, properties already in gradient, they stay the same, but we uh, have got a new property that is here, the color stops. Uh, the color stops is a, is a sequence of, uh, notice that it is a, a plural, and each uh, item is a color stop. When you expand <coughs> it, you see, a uh, color stop is new too. That's uh, a new <coughs> a part in the in the RP. Uh, it has um, uh, two components. It's a strut with two components. One is a stop color that gives you, as its name says, uh, uh, the color, and the second one is a stop offset. Uh, <coughs> this part. Uh, of the properties describe uh, the color transition from um, which are the position is relative, it goes from zero uh, to one. And this uh, stop offset uh, says, well, uh, the, the color is located. In this case, we have a color at uh, the start and a color at the end. And uh, when you see this, here is a you have uh, surely an idea how we get a multicolor. We simply introduce more of these color stops. So, a uh, <coughs> multicolor gradient could be we have uh, at offset zero, we have a green, at position uh, dot six, we have a yellow, and at position one, we have a red. And we have a multicolor. Uh, we will uh, use this example, this gradient, uh, and see how we can create it using a macro. Uh, the example um, I show you here is uh, I have written a, a sign color gradient to select a shape. It has uh, four steps. First, I select the, uh, the shape. Uh, next, I uh, build the uh, gradient. Then I add this gradient to the uh, gradient table. This is a collection I have mentioned. And that gives me a, a name, a new name. And then can I assign this new gradient to the uh, shape. In this uh, four steps, only this tab is new. The other steps would be uh, the same for the current um, uh, gradients. So uh, we look at uh, this new part. Uh, I have structured uh, this new um, part into uh, three steps. Uh, we look how we define the color. We create the color stops and uh, from them the complete gradient. 
uh, first, the colors. Um, I said the colors are in a stop color, but we now need uh, to look a, a little bit uh, deeper into it. Uh, such a, a stop color is an um, RGB color. Uh, you might not have used it in your macros. Uh, it has a blue, green, and red component, uh, but in contrast to the usual way where you describe the col uh, color channels with uh, values from uh, 0 to uh, 255, uh, these values go from uh, 0 to 1. It's a simple division uh, to uh, get these values. Uh, and um, this um, uh, converging uh, I have uh, put into a function create this uh, color. Uh, the, oops, that was one touch. Um, the time uh, will likely change uh, when the gradients uh, will become able to use theme colors. Uh, for a theme color, uh, you need to have a reference to the used theme, and a, a color is then a, um, given by a name. Um, but that is not um, essential for such uh, macros. You only need a different converter that other gives, puts uh, the, uh, what you uh, have as this color description uh, into uh, numeric values. Okay. Uh, the definition uh, itself uh, is uh, clear. The function is written in that way that you give the uh, three uh, uh, color uh, channel values as you can see them in the uh, pick a color di uh, dialog and uh, then I have here defined a start color and a between color and the end color. That's the three colors. Okay, now we create the color stops. Uh, You, uh, uh, this uh, color stops is um, sequence in uh, the API uh, that becomes an array in uh, basic uh, that is here. Uh, remember we have here uh, basic uh, arrow uh, the two is uh, uh, index from zero, one and two. Uh, when you uh, assign the uh, color stop to the um, as array element, you need uh, two steps. Uh, the first one is you create uh, the strut, which uh, is uh, the color stop. You have to assign the uh, stop color and the stop offset. And in the second step, you uh, assign this uh, complete uh, stop to the uh, array element. When you do that, uh, you need to um, be careful that your stops are ordered in uh, increasing in the offset values. Uh, you may use uh, the same uh, offset uh, for two um, uh, colors, but uh, you may not uh, uh, go, go back, go lower. We need uh, these uh, two stops uh, at the same uh, offset position uh, to get a hard color transition. Now, now the, last, the last step, we create the actual gradient. Uh, here's uh, just again the, the screenshot from the, de the development tool, right, so that you see where we are. Uh, when you look here, you see the lab, what belongs to this gradient too. All gray parts are gradients, already exist in gradient. The really new part is this uh, emphasized in blue. We have this 
new um, <coughs> component and we assign the uh, uh, color stops we have uh, just uh, defined. Uh, I have used a with statement because uh, here is uh, worse to use it. It is uh, really a lot of uh, properties which belong to it. Um, important is this uh, one too. Uh, the existing gradient has a start color and an end color. And to um, get better interoperability with uh, backwards uh, compatibility, uh, it's um, uh, you should um, set the start color to the color of uh, the first color stop and the end color to the uh, color of the last uh, color stop. Uh, to do that you need a converter again because the uh, start and end color are uh, data type long and uh, you need to convert it uh, but uh, that is the easy part, it's this function to do that. So, I think we try it, uh, we try it out. <laughs> uh, for, uh, for that I have to, uh, to leave the presentation because uh, the macros are written that, I, uh, that they work with a selected shame, uh, shape and that is not in presentation mode. So, what to do? I Here we are. I uh, sell. sell. Oh, you see, you don't see that. That's um, POM. Switch to duplicate with monitors. That should work, I yeah. think. Yeah. Okay. Try it again. <laughs> I select the shape, and then uh, you can press uh, Alt F11 which brings up the dialog for macros. In the, on the left side, you um, uh, select where the macro is. In this case, it is inside the presentation file. And here uh, is the library which belongs to it. And there in uh, the main, and here the macro I have explained. And now I can run it. And you see the nice, hopefully nice, green, yellow, and, <laughs> and red uh, gradient. Okay. I, I guess I need to... So, we can go forward. Uh, yes, we have not only color gradi gradients, but we have also transparent uh, gradients. Uh, fortunately, it's not uh, very dif different. The uh, gray uh, transparent is an, uh, encoded as gray, uh, so you uh, can uh, use all what you have uh, learned about uh, color gradients for uh, the transparency uh, too. That means uh, you must uh, you have only make sure that the three color uh, <coughs> components have the same value and then you get the transparency. A little bit different is the table. Uh, the document has a um, um, separate table for transparency uh, gradients and uh, has separate uh, properties for, for transparency. Uh, what you can be tried is... Uh, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. yeah, five minutes, okay. I will try it. Uh, here we go, uh, go the other way around. I first uh, uh, show you what uh, such uh, transparent uh, gradient uh, can do. 
we select a shape and then we do 11 and now we make transparency and uh, the <coughs> solid white fill is uh, partly transparent. You have um, at the outer edge, you have a semi-transparent uh, 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 <coughs> value uh, that goes to uh, no transparency and then it is uh, an area where it stays no transparency and then we have a hard uh, transition to full transparency. Let's go on here. Um, here you see how the color values uh, correspond, to, correspond to the transparency. You simply divide it uh, to, uh, to uh, 255 and uh, interpret that as uh, <coughs> percent for the transparency. Uh, that are the three uh, steps and here you can see the areas. It goes from 0 to dot 3, the gradient which uh, goes to uh, solid. Then we have uh, an area which is uh, solid and here we have uh, uh, stops with the same offset that is a hard transition and it um, remains on uh, full transparent uh, uh, to the end. So what is new? We have gradient 2, we had gradient stops, they need to be ordered. We have a uh, color stop is new with a stop color and a stop offset and you need some uh, converters. What you still need is a gradient table and, or a transparency gradient table of the document and you still need the fill properties of a shape or the background properties of a page. Okay, that's all. Time for questions. <laughs> no question? Uh, when you uh, came uh, to questions later, later on, uh, that is my uh, contact and I uh, will be at the uh, Hackfest on, on uh, Friday. Uh, I think that's a good place when you have uh, questions about uh, these uh, macros. Okay, thank you for listening to my talk. And have a nice time at the conference.